In this section we're going to be talking about the tackle law and the laws that govern the tackle and what referees and players need to know. The first thing to know is that a, uh, a tackle needs to have the ball carrier held by an opponent and the, and the ball carrier has to be brought to ground by that opponent. If the ball carrier is not held on the ground, then no tackle has taken place. This might happen in a scenario such as an ankle tap or where a player goes to ground to secure the ball. So the ball carrier here is not held, which means no tackle has taken place. So he's got a couple of options here. One, he can get straight to his feet and continue without letting go of the ball. Or, if he's still on the ground and we have another player on their feet immediately, this player must be in a position to either release the ball to him or play it straight away. Here we have a tackle. Ball carrier held by an opponent and brought to ground. Our ball carrier is now tackled and ingeniously in rugby he now becomes known as the tackled player. Our opponent becomes the tackler. Okay, in this situation we have had a tackle but the player making the tackle has not gone to ground. So we have had a tackle because the ball carrier has been held by an opponent and brought to ground. Our ball carrier is now known as the tackled player and the tackle laws do apply. This player here has not gone to ground, therefore he's not a tackler. This leaves us with an odd situation in rugby. We've just had a tackle with no tackler. Why that's important will be made clear when we look at the gate. Okay, back to our regular tackle. In this situation, we have both a tackled player and a tackler. Now, the tackler has to release and roll away immediately, according to the law book. The tackled player has to release the ball and play it immediately, according to the law book. What are the chances of both of those two things happening immediately? Absolutely zero. So the question is, which of these two things does the referee concentrate on first? The answer is the tackler. He's the man we've got to get out of the road for the betterment of the game. If we can get him out, then we free up space for players to come through and contest for the ball, and we make it easier for this player to play the ball and for the, the possession to be contested. So let's look at the tackler and what he needs to do, given that he's the first port of call for the referee. First thing he needs to do is actually release the tackle player on the ground. Not many people understand that that's the first thing that has to happen before we worry about rolling away or anything like that. So release the player on the ground, and if he fails to do that, Penalty kick is for no release. Once he's released, he's now got a choice of two options. He can get straight to his feet and go for the ball if he's in a position to do so. So straight on, off your, onto your feet and go away. Note, he does not have to worry about any gate. He's a tackler. He can pick up the ball from any direction and go. Or if he's not in a position to get to his feet and contest the ball, he's simply got to roll away. And a player who doesn't roll away and leaves, and leaves himself protecting the ball be penalised for not rolling away. So in this situation we have had a tackle and again we don't have a tackler but this player finds himself already in the gate which means he's in a position to go straight for the ball. However the first thing he's got to do is release the tackle player on the ground and release the ball. Some players will try and make this high focus tackle, go to ground, never let the player or the ball go and have a tug at the ball. Well, that's actually a penalty for no release. This player who's on his feet has got to let go of the ball on the ground and then have a crack at the ball from that position after he's done that. Okay, once we've dealt with the tackler, we now move on to the tackled player and look at what his options are. He's got to play the ball immediately, place, pass, release. Most coaches would want him to get a nice long place away from the opposition to make it easier for his team to contest the ball. Alternatively, he's got the option of popping the ball up off the ground to a supporting player. Uh, we have no problems with passing the ball off the ground in rugby so long as it's done reasonably quickly. He can also hand off the ball to a supporting player or he can roll the ball back to a supporting player once he's on the ground. So roll the ball back and away we go. So the next question we've got to ask is, how long does this player have to actually play the ball? And the answer is, well, the law book says immediately. Although a lot of people have a lot of different opinions about how long immediately is. We often hear three seconds, and that certainly isn't the law book, so that's not correct either. What we look at is, 
This plier has as much time as it takes for there to be an opposing plier or supporting plier on their feet attempting to go for the ball. So in a situation where a plier from the opposing team is on their feet trying to contest the ball, this plier has run out of time. He's got to let go of the ball immediately and let, let this plier have it. However, in a situation where there's no opposing plier trying to play the ball, well, this player now has a lot more time at his disposal to exercise his options, and a referee certainly shouldn't be penalising a player for not releasing the ball if it's going to have no material effect on the game. If the player is there and a player is on his feet trying to go for the ball and he won't release, that's a penalty kick for no release. If he's in open space, the tackled player may also release the ball, get to his feet, pick the ball up and continue running. Once we've dealt with the tackler and the tackle player, the next issue are arriving players at the tackle. The referee is looking for them to do two things. One, stay on their feet, and two, go through the gate. On the issue of staying on their feet, the referees are looking for players, supporting players from both teams to be a plane taking off, not a plane landing. So let's have a look at these two scenarios and, uh, and identify what the referee is looking for. So if we have a tackle, first off, and then an arriving player comes through off his feet to try and secure the ball for his team. In that situation, he's a plane landing and the referee should penalise for not staying on his feet. In this situation, we're going to have a player going off their feet not because they've gone off deliberately to kill the ball, but rather because their opposition is weak. In that situation, a player who's driving out positively as a plane taking off shouldn't be penalised by the referee if he ends up going off his feet because of the fact that he did so because of weak opposition. So let's have a look at our tackle here. Oh, a player here in a weak position, he drives through and ends up going off his feet. Let's talk now about the gate. The gate is not actually in the law book. It's a construct that we use to explain to players what direction they can approach from in order to contest the ball at the tackle. What the law book says is that you've got to come from behind the ball and from behind the player closest to your goal line. So in this case for gold, they've got their two points here. They've got to come in from behind, in this case the tackler, closest to their own goal line. So they've got to come from this direction. Blue running in this direction is going to have to come from the direction of their own goal line. And these areas here are what we call the gate. Any player who comes in the side is going to be penalised for not coming through the gate. So now we've talked about the gate, let's return to what we were talking about before, the tackle with no tackler. So let's see that tackle happen. So again, we have had a tackle because we've had a ball carrier held by an opponent and brought to ground, but this player is not a tackler because he hasn't gone to ground. Now, as we talked about before, what makes him special if he's a tackler is that he doesn't have to worry about the gate. In this situation, because he's not a tackler, he cannot play the ball from this position. This is something that a lot of coaches, players and some referees don't really understand. In this situation, this player cannot play the ball from here. He's got to come back around and through the gate. And a gate does exist even though we've got only one player from one team on the ground. The last thing we want to talk about a tackle is tackle offside. There is in fact no such thing. Any player who's penalised for entry at the tackle is actually penalised for not coming through the gate, not for offside. And the reason is there is no offside as we can see from this situation here. We have a tackle uh, and we have a tackle only if the goal player pops the ball up to a supporting goal player here and this blue player who's in front of his team's gate makes a tackle, crowd will probably have a problem with that, claiming offside, but in actual fact it's A-OK, -okay. there is no offside at a tackle. Similarly, that player could take an intercept and run off for the rest of the field, no problem. That player isn't offside until we have a ruck form over the tackle. Now let's look at ruck and some of the laws that apply around a ruck. In order to have a ruck, we've got to meet the definition, which is two players from opposite teams in physical contact over the ball. So if we have our players come through, uh, and play each other, we've now got physical contact over the ball, we have a ruck. At this point, we've got offside lines that extend throughout the entire, across the entire field, 
the players now need to move back behind. In addition, no players can now win the ball with their hands. Which brings up an interesting question for referees. For players who are contesting the ball with their hands, at what point does the referee ask them to take their hands off? Well, let's look at the situation where our blue player is jackling for the ball from the, white, from the gold player on the ground. In this situation, what the referee is looking for is that the blue player has got his hands on the ball and is actually contesting the ball. Now, for this year, the IRB have made, made it clear that a player who arrives first at the tackle may continue to play that ball so long as he gets possession of the ball as this ruck forms. So if he's got his hands on the ball and this player comes through to contest it, no referee should now ask for that player to take his hands off the ball. We should allow the player to continue to win the turnover and allow him to play the ball with his hands.